Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is January 6th and I thought I'd do another episode here today because I really want to drive home the point of the unusual nature of this wind event coming for Southern California. Damaging winds are expected. Life-threatening and destructive windstorm is on its way and some very high fire danger here would just exacerbate those conditions and we really want everybody to be aware of the potential for fast-moving Firestorms have a go bag ready, especially those typical foothill and mountain areas that are susceptible to some of these fires. And we're going to have mountain wave activity that could bring some very strong winds into areas that don't typically see very strong winds during Santa Ana wind events. So taking a look here, 50 to 80 miles per hour, isolated 80 to 100 miles per hour. Are you kidding me for the mountains and foothills, down trees, power outages, low relative humidity, dry vegetation, and extremely erratic fire behavior is possible here. Extreme risk. You need to take action and be prepared now. Have a communication plan ready to go. Have a grab bag ready to go in case you need to evacuate. And you can see the timeline for this is for tomorrow and Wednesday, 7th and 8th through January. Many down trees, power outages, dangerous sea conditions off of Los Angeles and Orange County coasts, including Catalina Island, dangerous fire weather, knocked over big ribs, significant airport delays and turbulence. Now is the time to act and, you know, park cars away from trees, have your generators ready to go, charge your devices and have that grab bag ready to go. Don't underestimate the strong winds. A lot of different graphics here from the National Weather Service, but all good ideas. And they do talk about the potential damaging mountain wave activity and windstorm. And again, they're mentioning those wind gusts here. Peak period, 10 p.m. Tuesday through 10 p.m. on Wednesday. This could be the strongest north wind event since the November-December 2011 event where Pasadena was hit with 90 mile per hour gusts and substantial tree damage. And I don't have to tell you what would happen if you got some fires going when the winds were that strong with the low relative humidities. Now, high wind warnings and advisories are in effect. You can check your National Weather Service pages if you want more details on that. I will be talking about some of what they're talking about in the forecast discussion here in a moment, though. Minimum relative humidity for Wednesday. Look at some of these single digits out here. It is just going to be prime for extreme fire growth and behavior. So, again, I cannot drive the home this point enough. Be prepared for that. And uh, Anthony Edwards is a good one to follow on X. He's talking about the near 500,000 California homes businesses could lose power in huge fire prevention shutoffs. You don't want trees knocking down into power lines and things of that nature here when these strong winds get going. So, definitely not a bad idea but you may lose power you know without even any kind of damage in your local neighborhoods uh, and again uh, you can see high wind warnings are in effect we got red flag warnings and very dire uh, wording in some of these advisories here as well and as you can see um, you know they're talking about long-range spotting here I'll show you what that is here in the next graphic but again, particularly dangerous situation. You can see that PDS right flag warning in effect noon Tuesday until 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Now, what is long range spotting? So you might think that you're far enough away from other trees or objects or whatever it may be that's burning. But when you get this lofted up into the atmosphere and the strong winds can carry those embers downstream and they can light things on fire well away from where you might think. So that is what long range spotting is. And that is definitely going to come into play here if any fires do get going. Now, looking at about 34,000 feet in the atmosphere, you'll notice that basically the entire column of the atmosphere is showing these northeast winds. So that might allow for some momentum from these uh, strong winds aloft to actually mix down and interact with some of the terrain there and bring some of these damaging mountain waves and rotor activity down into Southern California. And if we take a look at 18,000 feet or 500 millibars here, you can clearly see that northeast component again as well. If we look at 10,000 feet, well, you guessed it. There it is, that northeast wind as we go on in through Tuesday night and into Wednesday. It's going to be continuing on. If we look at down at 2,500 feet or 925 millibars, you see it interacting with the terrain more. And I also want to mention the Sierras are going to get very windy, especially uh, uh, across some of the exposed ridges and whatnot out of the northeast. Some very strong winds there also. We can really see it just absolutely ramp up as we go through Tuesday. 
Now we're scrolling on in through the day Tuesday afternoon. Look at them really ramp up Tuesday night and on into Wednesday morning. Just absolutely powerful winds out of the Northeast. And again, I want to drive home that point. I know a lot of people know, hey, the Santa Ana winds don't hit me where I live, but this mountain wave activity could be impacting areas like the Los Angeles Metro. And again, areas that don't normally get strong Santa Ana winds may be affected by some of these damaging wind gusts. And if we look at Ontario, again, you can see the entire column of the atmosphere out of the Northeast, very low relative relative humidities. The green line is the, uh, the, the dew point there. And the red line is temperature. So you can see a big spread there. And again, very strong winds interacting with the terrain, spreading those rotor mountain waves downstream. Um, now, taking a look here at the entire state of California, uh, accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts. You've got the North American model, hot off the presses, 00Z, the high resolution here on the right. And you can see the Sierra Nevada is going to get very windy as well. And uh, again, let me back this up here because you can see that after midnight, the winds are going to be picking up out of the north and east for Southern California on both models there. So it's going to get windy not that far away. I mean, we're looking at six hours away from where I'm doing this weather briefing right now. And then you can see the winds really ramping up as we go through two. Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning also down the Peninsula Ranges into Baja. Some of the desert areas getting very windy also. Crosswind for a lot of the interstate. So, yeah, the winds are on their way here, folks. Sound the alarms. Be prepared. You know, let your neighbors know. Uh, hopefully everybody knows what is incoming here. And if we take a closer look, you can see I think that's Irvine right there. You can see some of these areas approaching 70 miles per hour. Not that far from Malibu. Yeah, that got kind of an ugly look to it across some of the foothills and mountainous areas as well. Uh, places like Pasadena might be getting another round of some big winds. You also see the Los Angeles Metro on the North American model. 50, 55, 60 miles per hour. The her a little bit bit less the closer you get to the coastline here but i wouldn't rule out some really big gusts coming roaring down there as well and also shows some gusts getting out towards you know, just north of san diego there 40 45 miles per hour as well so again kind of breaking things down uh, I, you know it, it can be very difficult to predict where these mountain waves are going to surface there and the most likely areas are the eastern san fernando valley northern san gabriel valley but again a lot of areas are going to be susceptible to this humidities will drop and uh, you know high confidence in this strong offshore wind event it is on its way folks have a grab bag have your electronics charged be ready to go in the case of a worst case scenario and there's a firestorm bearing down on your home or your apartment or wherever you may be living. And just to kind of drive home that point, as we go through uh, tonight, you can kind of see the relative humidity start to drop off really as we go through the day tomorrow. And then you notice as we're going through Wednesday morning, look at them just plumbing off a cliff here with some single digits out there across much of the Southland here. So again, be very careful out there and be ready to go. Looking quickly at the extended forecast, uh, this morning's European, not much help. We don't have much precipitation incoming here to California in the long-term forecast. We'll continue to watch that and see if that changes, but yeah, not great. And again, very dire wording here and make sure to check with your local authorities if you need to. And I'll do my normal briefing again tomorrow. We'll have one more look at things here. The winds will be kicking up by that time. But as we go through the day tomorrow into Wednesday morning, they will be increasing. So I'll do my normal briefing here tomorrow. Um, what else? Click like and subscribe. Hopefully everybody's prepared. Hopefully the word is out to everybody. Um, and I will talk to you guys again tomorrow.